Hi everybody, let's talk about Elgar's slow movement today. It is always interesting to compare great recordings and I've, like most of us, probably listened to Jacqueline's rendition many, many times, both renditions, and also to Beatrice Harrison, conducted by Elgar himself. And Beatrice uses more portamento, more slides that are more in the style back then, were in the style back then. And I wanted to share some of my thoughts regarding fingerings and slurs for this very beautiful movement. So... Uh, right in the beginning you have a choice of open string. Like Jacqueline. Or like Beatrice, I think she does something like... Anyway, there's some kind of a slide there. Um, Think of a um, fairly narrow vibrato, tapering with a little less vibrato. So. This kind, in my opinion. I used to have a teacher who used to say, uh, think of your fingers as tentacles reaching out to find a D. Those are like breaths or uh, sighs. <laughs> Also, the choice for me is between playing up, down, and I'm sorry I'm getting so technical, but I think one of the hardest things for me is to decide on fingerings and slurs for this. It's not obvious, and this movement does not play by itself, so to speak. So you have a choice of going up, up, down, starting the crescendo on the up bow. on a down bow gives me more traction so I'm more comfortable maybe it's because that's the way I practice as a teenager just in my DNA already but uh, uh, not every crescendo is better on the up bow so this is something you have to feel comfortable with uh, uh, Also try to vary the ways you reach that high B flat. Uh, you can do a little gliss. It has to be done well, obviously. I don't recommend using the A string. I do actually play like that sometimes, but I find that for the beginning of the movement, a more subtle shift is better. That's for me. on one slur. Of course, if you use the reverse slurs, you will find that it is best to separate those. And here, you'll notice that we have those tied eighth notes uh, upbeat to rehearsal 36, and again uh, upbeat to one before rehearsal 39. I like having those on the down bow. I think it's important to feel that. Um, that is something is stretched and waiting to happen. I also like to start a non vib almost non vib or non vib in that upbeat, and then add the vibrato on the downbeat of rehearsal 36 so that the color change is is pronounced so and you know 
notice that I've, I used the D string for both those second voices, the, the E flat and D, and then the D flat and C. I think they're darker in color, and so the D string is better. Here we have a slow shift and really be sure it is slow. As I said many times before, the shifts in a slow um, piece or a movement, uh, as well as trills, should reflect the mood of the movement. So don't shift too fast here. Um, you can also decide you want to use the A string. So there is a, a rhythm to that shift. Can I hear your way up there? You should imagine the high note in your head and so that will uh, help uh, reach it in tune. Also many many repetitions help that. <laughs> use two bows there it's just too constricting to use one only one bow although it's printed that way and here Jacqueline uh, does those fingerings that I just played of course you can use the A string we do have pianissimo dolcissimo so depending on your cello it might be hard to play on the D string, it might not project enough, but I think you should give it a try. And then, again, I'm using Jacqueline's fingerings. Uh, let me show you another option. of starting a bone. Or down bow. <laughs> Unfortunately, we only have two, two options, down or up. <laughs> to that high B uh, sharp is a priority on the down bow. And so... And for that reason, I'm willing to start a bow in uh, rehearsal 38. Uh, although ideally, uh, I would start down bow in rehearsal 38. If you're comfortable shifting on the up bow, so... Reaching that C on the up bow, which is hard under pressure, let me tell you. So, and by all means, keep a down bow on the downbeat of 38. And you will uh, notice that now that second uh, voice. On the A string because we are in fortissimo appassionato um, as opposed to before there was a much more lyrical passage uh, definitely take your time in this shift which is four before three into three before rehearsal 39 Also a word about expressive intonation. I think it, it's okay in very painful spots to go a little sharper. So, especially 
especially with orchestra, sometimes playing sharp, uh, you will notice it if you hear Ostropovich play, it gives you an edge over the overall orchestra tuning, and so you, you for sure you're being heard. <laughs> an abrupt change of mood. And this is the other tied eighth that I was talking about before. So that's also expressive shift. This mood really needs those expressive shifts. And so find the ways to make it warm. Don't use just clean fingerings because this is really the place to milk it, but in a tasteful way. So I lift my bow and kind of Again, feel my way up there. You can hear your way up there. And sometimes we wait, we almost stop the bow before that special notes. And time almost stands still when you play with an orchestra. That said, all the time does stand still at a few points, beautiful points in this movement. You really have to be sure uh, that you're leading the orchestra the way you envision. It can be fall apart. It can fall apart quite easily if you don't have a, a clear direction to your phrases. Be sure you know where you're going. Mm. <laughs> Also use some air in your bow zone. Kind of sound. Um, you hear how the D is different than the F. Thank you for watching and I hope I helped you with some ideas. See you next time.